So it's raining and it's cold outside. So I figured it's perfect time for a little storytelling of a couple of weeks ago when it was a bit warmer. Here's the mission. We need to climb the mast to replace the wind vane, they call it, or I actually heard a friend of mine call it a wind chicken. The new wind vane comes with this like 60 feet of, of cable that you have to get through the mast somehow. Now the guy at the marina tells me that he's never seen it done unless the mast is unstepped. So to, to unstep the mast, literally they come in and they take like a crane, they take, this, they take the mast off and they lay it on its side and you can do all kinds of work with the electrical inside the mast. And it costs, I don't know, at least a thousand dollars, maybe a couple thousand dollars. I don't have time to do this, I don't have the money to do this. He says it can't be done by just climbing the mast. Of course to me, wait, I look at him sideways, it can't be done. My ego starts to churn. I'm on this mission. So the mission is this. Climb the mast, remove the old wind vane, replace the cable in the inside for the new system, the NEMA 2000 system, install the new wind vane at the top, plug it all in, it should be good to go. It shouldn't be very much of a chore, right? It shouldn't be a difficult project. I've got to climb to the top of the mast. So right now, Got the climbing harness going on. We've got some ropes. This is just going to be to uh, hoist our tools back and forth. And we're going to be, actually, I'll kind of demonstrate as we go what we're going to do. But you're going to use both halyards. You're going to use the jib halyard and the main halyard to uh, hoist up. I get my friend uh, Sam. And I've got my friend Sam here. I would tie a figure eight follow through um, on the loop and then go ahead and shackle this either to the loop or to the beaner. So you don't want to rely on just that shackle, you want to actually tie a knot in this. Um, right, have you, do you, do you know the how to climbing, do it? The climbing figure eight knot thing? Yeah. yeah. Tie the one figure eight. Leave yourself a generous dose of slack. You're fairly loose. And then you're going to uh, put this through, through your uh, belt loop or uh, climbing harness loop and then follow it back through. So you're just retracing the knot. You don't want to leave too much of a loop down here, otherwise the knot's gonna be right in your face as you climb. So I'm tracing this around, you see how your knot's all doubling up. And then you finish like that. And then tighten everything down. You have a doubled up figure eight. Now we're tracing it again. Trace it. And then we're gonna take the, uh, the shackle and then put it back through your climbing harness loop. Right here? Yep. Like this? Just like that. Just for a double safety? Measure of last resort. <laughs> All right, you got it. And then when climbing you, uh, up the mast, you always wanna have a second halyard as a, as a safety device, which we're gonna use uh, the jib halyard and we're going to put that through the loop also. So we're going to do the figure eight again with the uh, the other halyard. So now we're all tied in. We've got double whammy protection here. Jib halyard, main halyard, figure eight knots. Then we have secondary with the clamps attached to the harness and I'm getting ready to go up. I'm going to put this camera on my head here so you can get a visual of what's going on. Of course, me, I buy the cheapest harness you can find on Amazon for less than 20 bucks. The thing is killing me. It's, it's, it's digging into my legs, my thighs, my waist. My uh, harness up here a little bit, it's like really killing me. I get to the top. The first is just a, a quick run through. I wanted to inspect what's up there. So I see that there was the old cable and I see that the old wind vane is there. It has two screws I need to unhook. Of course, the new system, it has four screws. So I can't just use the old holes. So I come back down and we had this great plan. We were going to splice together the old wire, uh, old cable, with the new cable using uh, half hitches. And we're gonna do it in a certain way that it's gonna pull it tighter as we go. So it's gonna be these half hitches. If you can demonstrate here. So this end is gonna be fixed with tape. And then we tie a little loop there. Go down, we're gonna tie another hitch 
just a series of these hitches. Oops. So those first two, and as this gets pulled, the rope's going to pull down around itself and remain tight. That works out very well. It's very strong. We even test it. Let's test it. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Then Sam wants to go up. So I hoist Sam up the mast. He's at the top. He then starts raising the old cable up. Okay. And it becomes very difficult and there's a lot of friction. So he's hoisting, he's like, it's getting really tough and he's having to use a lot of strength. About two thirds of the way to the top. I think we're almost there. It snaps. The wire just broke. Our feeder wire broke. I can't believe this is happening. Our rope actually held up. It was the it was the cable that broke. So this broke. I'm in disbelief. This plan A that was supposed to be simple completely shattered. The adage comes to mind, never, never, never give up. We had to then go to plan B. I've seen on some other videos people using fishing line. Okay, we're back after lunch and we're gonna go for a plan B, which we have little to no confidence will actually work, but we're gonna use the old fishing line weighted trick from the top and we're gonna see if we're gonna be able to get it all the way down to the bottom using this heavy duty line. Okay, we're going up again for plan B. You think it's gonna work? I then climb the mast with fishing line and I'm able to lower the fishing line down. It's going smoothly. Okay, you ready? All of a sudden it stops. It does not get to the bottom. I then go back down. I inspect at the, the level right at the deck. Now Sam is gone and this is one of the most defeated days I've had of boat ownership so far. We are defeated on this project. Um, the fishing line with the weight, um, it went down to probably the, and it stopped. Uh, I actually was able to, uh, I was able to fish it out right here. So it's still, the long part is still going to the top of the mast and the weight is still going down, but it stops here. Here, uh, I'm sure you can't, see, you can't actually see anything on the camera. So we're really at a loss for what to do. Our only hope was really that uh, initial cable. And I have no idea how that happened with the, um, well, what happened was it was chafing along the way as he was pulling it up and then at one point it just broke. So we're kind of back to square one, unfortunately. Um, all right, I don't want to end on a low note, so let's, let me come back tomorrow and finish this video. I do some more research online. I find out that in most mass setups, there is what they call a conduit. And a conduit is like a, a PVC pipe, if you will, that goes all the way from the top of the mast to the bottom that's where a lot of the cabling and wiring is in. That way it does not interfere with the halyards that are going through the middle of the, of the mast there. Because you have your, you know, your main halyard, your jib halyard, you have other items that are moving parts inside the mast that you don't want to interfere with, with some wires or cabling. I'm actually able to put my finger in the little, in the little hole toward the bottom of the mast. I'm able to see that, oh yeah, there is a conduit. It's literally like a round PVC pipe. So my mind is kind of scrolling through the different options. So I realize that the top of the mast, there's a mast cover. It's like a cap. I don't know the proper name, but there's like a cap that comes off the top of the mast. Next day, I get Sam to come back. I climb up to the top of the mast again. I'm able to take the top cover off. It actually isn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be, luckily, so that's one break we caught. But again, with Murphy's Law, anything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong. Everything was going wrong. I gotta get a visual of this conduit piece of shit. I see it, I see it. 
This is it. This is harder than it looks. Mother of. Okay, so now I've got the top off of this thing. So I'm going to try to fish the feed, the line down there, because I can see the conduit. Now, of course, this conduit is not easily accessible. It happens to be underneath those pulleys. So I can't just drop down the line in the conduit. I have to get a coat hanger. I have to somehow finagle it into the side down below these pulleys right here. I'm going down here. Finally, I get it to drop in. We got it. We got it. Got the conduit. That was a major piece of success. I dropped down the fishing line goes to the bottom of the mast. Sam is down there. He says, I think I hear something, but I'm not able to see it. The, the hole where you're actually going to see anything is so small at the very bottom of the mast. And it's on the opposite side where you can get your face. So it's, we had a mirror out there. We're trying to finagle. He says, you can't, you can't fish this out. Again, in my mind, excuse me, you can't we have to try something. I grab a coat hanger, I put a little hook on it. I go into the hole that's on there you can't even see into. I'm just reaching in without even looking. And I'm just gonna kind of sweep. I'm gonna do a sweeping motion inside and see if anything comes out. So I sweep it, I sweep it, I pull out and sure enough, there is the fishing line. It's a beautiful From that point, all right, we're back for day three of this uh, mast cable challenge. We then uh, splice on a paracord. All right, so this is the fishing wire that's going up the mast. We have it daisy chained onto the 550 cord, taped it up so it doesn't interfere with anything. Okay. And then the 550 cord goes back here in a little coil, and it is daisy chained onto the actual data cable we're trying to take up. Let's just make sure that it doesn't come loose inside the mast. That was the plan. We spliced it together. We tested the strength of it. Very strong. All right, here we go with what round four or five up the mast. All right, I'm a little more than halfway up, but we've run into a small problem. I don't know if you can see. Uh, oh, you can't really see, but there's like 10 wasps that are hanging out at the very top of the mast. So we got a problem here, but we're gonna keep going. All right, we made it to the top again. There we go. So last time, I don't know if you could see that from the, the head mount, but I was able to take this off here. There is a conduit, which you can't even see, where we have the fishing line. All right, so we're gonna start pulling up on the fishing line and see if we can get all the other items up. Okay, I'm at the paracord. Okay, I'm gonna go with the paracord now. We got it! We got it! We got it! All right, now we're just gonna hang around for a second, catch your breath. So the cable comes through, we thought we were done. We thought this is it. I thought it's gonna be a simple change out. I'm gonna take out the old uh, transducer, wind chicken, and uh, replace it with the, with the new one. I unscrew the old wind chicken. I then uh, have to drill new holes. Uh, I place the new base there on the uh, top of the mast and I start drilling the holes. Everything possible that could go wrong. As I'm drilling, of course, the battery is dying. Running out of juice up here. Sh I give it every last little juice. I'm gonna and it dies every time I do that on the last hole when I'm halfway through it. Luckily, I'm able to do it just enough. Come on. 
I get through the last hole. The holes are a little small, but I'm not able to drill bigger holes because the battery is dead. It's self-tapping screws into this fairly solid piece of metal at the top. I'm self-tapping the screws. They're not going in like they should. I then bring up an impact hammer, which is like another drill, but it's specifically for um, putting in or taking out tough to, tough to turn screws. Of course, what happens... I can't even begin to tell you the, uh, the frustration at this point. This has literally been three, four days worth of work um, going up and down the mast. So that last time we thought we were there, we were literally, literally five minutes from completion, maybe less. Uh, two of the screws broke. The, the screws break. So now it's like the, it's, it's the ultimate in uh, frustration. So plan, where are we at now, D or E? I get vice grips. My plan of action was to grab the little nub of the broken off screw with the vice grips, tighten it as, as hard as possible, loosen. All right, we're up once again at the top. This time we're trying to get these screws that, those screws that broke off, we have to get them out. That way we can re-drill bigger holes and hopefully get the self-tapping screws in. works. Luckily that worked. We're golden now, I thought. I go back up now with a different uh, drill. I'm, I'm drilling in bigger holes. I get everything in place. This is it. It's getting dark. I'm like, doesn't matter because we're already done. Okay, after drilling multiple holes, I finally got it to fit. Finally, the final step as it gets dark. I bring up the new wind chicken. I start to place the wind chicken on there. Oh my God. <laughs> this is ridiculous, dude. It's not gonna work because the light is in the way. You won't believe what happened. I'll show you one of the old photos. You see where the light is for the anchor? I placed the base of the wind chicken one millimeter too close to that anchor light. I cannot now get the wind vane on to the base. It's not fitting, it's one millimeter off. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Everything that has gone wrong, everything's going wrong. Oh my God, this is just the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I then, uh, I loosened in the mass light, the anchor light and I'm able to finagle it in and I'm able to drop it in. Got it. Got it. Mission completed, we got it. All right, let's plug this, let's plug this thing in, see if it works. Depth, speed and depth transducer. And this is gonna be our wind vane. Instruments. It's coming on. All right. Let's see if the wind's working. Come on. What's happening? That's supposed to be the wind. What the freak is happening? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Next day, I call customer service. Thank you for calling Navico, leader in marine electronics featuring B&G, Lowrance, and Simrad products. For calls about our websites or products purchased through our websites, press 1. 
For customer service or technical support, press four. Oh, Jesus, I thought I was going to say two. With these options, press the pass sign. Thank you for calling Navico. Why does he press one and then it goes to skip to four? Lawrence and Simrad products. Oh, hitting four now. For Lawrence products, press one. For Simrad products, press two. Oh, my God. For B&G products, press three. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. A representative will be with you shortly. Let's see how long this takes. I spent about an hour on hold, well, half hour on hold with the BNG tech support guy. Clearly it is spinning and we should get some wind readings from it. All right, let me explain to you what this guy told me on the tech support. He tells me that there could be an easy solution to the problem. And I wanna be with you when I show you this. As I showed you before, these T's, and this is the terminator. This was the wind transducer. He says plug this in as the terminator, not with the other T, because the, the wind vane has its own built-in terminator. Let's do that now. I'm gonna take out this T itself. Okay, taking these pieces away. Now I'm going to plug in the the wind sensor directly as a terminator. Now let's see if it works. Let's call Stephanie because I was telling her the whole story and I want to see I want to show her what happens live when this thing goes in. Did it work? Just getting ready to try it. I wanted to have you with me on the phone. No doubt, I'm hitting the instrument panel, and I'm, it's coming up. It's on! It's working! It is working! Eight, eight knots of wind speed. Got seven knots of true wind. Great job, love. Apparent wind angle, 113 degrees. True wind speed is 10 knots. We made it! <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you later. So that's the story of the day. A couple lessons about how to climb the mast, and the end result here. Just because someone says it can't be done, don't give up. Now, don't be foolish. Maybe I was a little halfway through. But in the end, we got it done. So thanks for watching. Never give up. We'll see you next time.